<laughs> oh, I just puked out a little diamond. Well, now that I'm rich, I don't really see much of a point in continuing this. Uh, you know, it's 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 sort of my money versus nothing really that big of a deal uh, compared to my money. And as we all know, diamonds are intrinsically valuable. They're worth j- jillions, uh, maybe even pillions. So I'm going to go ahead and sell this now. Uh, the rest of the show is whatever. It's probably not going to be, you know, as exciting or educational as my previous episodes. It's probably just going to be a bunch of trash because I don't even care anymore. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm not even going to do anything. <clears throat> yeah, I can belch now on my own podcast. When's the intro coming? Is it coming? Who knows? Maybe it won't even come. I'm so wealthy. I don't even need to give you an intro. I'm so wealthy that, you know, when it comes down to it, you should be giving me intros. I want three new intros by tomorrow on my desk, Jerry. On my desk. By tomorrow, Jerry. I want those intros, Jerry. You better give me those intros, Jerry. I want them stamped, paper clipped on my desk, Jerry. On my desk. Get it on my desk, Jerry. Jerry, get it on my desk. Jerry. Jerry! 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 Hey there, and welcome to the Matt Hawker Show. Oh. Welcome to the Matt Hawker Show. I'm Matt Hawker, and I like putting plastic bags over my face and going, hmm, interesting. Today on the show, we have an exciting adventure planned just for you. I will be your personal adventure master, and we are going to basically see where the where things unfold. So I'd like everyone to pull out a D6 or a D20 or a D4. A D10 would also work, or a D12. Uh... Or you can pull out a coin. Coins are also fair game. You could pull that out and, you know, just go along with it. All right. So you, the Matt Hawker podcast listener, have awoken in your Matt Hawker's themed sheets in your new Matt Hawker shirt only available at Redbubble. You look in the mirror and you say, wow, this looks like a nice shirt. It sure would go well with a nice comb. You decide to roll the D6 to see what kind of comb you get. If you're using another die, unfortunately, you don't get a comb this round. That's too bad. If you rolled anything less than a 2, you die immediately and your adventure is over. If it is a 4 or higher, a nice golden comb appears that seems to look almost like skeleton bones that were painted in a Home Depot. If you rolled a 3, you get a boombox and you become a musician and you no longer care about the adventure. So for those of you still with us, you now have a comb. You start combing your hair and realize, hmm, this is a comb I'm using right now. As you're combing your hair, you look into the mirror and suddenly you think to yourself, wow, how could I have just looked into the mirror just now when I've been looking into it this entire time? The narration doesn't make sense. Wait, I'm talking to myself? You've gained the ability to talk to yourself. You've never had this before. You start thinking all sorts of thoughts. Suddenly, the comb says, Hello, child. I will grant you one wish. So, for those of you at the D20, you get to participate in this. You roll the D20 to see what you're going to wish. If it is a one through five, you don't make a wish and you eat the comb. If it is a six through ten, you actually make a wish. uh, And if it is above ten, you don't make a wish and you don't eat the comb. You just start slapping your leg and going, ha! (laughs) <laughs> That's a knee slapper, even though no one made a joke, and you do this for eternity. Um, so the wish you make, basically, uh, because I'm not going to let you decide the wish, basically you wish that the Matt Hawker show would keep going and going and going forever. And the comb goes, Ah, child, your wish is granted. <laughs> the wish has now been granted. You go outside, all styled in your Matt Hawker Show shirt, your Matt Hawker Show shoes, and your Matt Hawker Special Edition one-of-a-kind glow-in-the-dark AM-only watch. Truly fantastic. You can get all this online. So you decide to roll a D4 to see what direction you go. 
you roll the d4. The d4 gets stuck in the crack of the sidewalk that you're now on. You decide to step on it to see what happens. The sidewalk splits open. A hole appears beneath you. You start falling endlessly. You can't stop. You try to grab onto the walls, but the walls just get wider and wider. You can't reach them. You feel yourself expanding with the hole, becoming larger, stranger, like your body is corrupted by the depths below. You see a light beneath you. You think, is this the end? Is this lava? Will I burn down here? But it isn't. You get teleported to a new world known as the Ur world. In the Ur world, you realize things aren't what they were above. How strange. In this world, everyone's really wide, but not really tall. Like everyone's flat like a coin. For those of you that brought your coin, you may now flip it. You flip the coin. If you flip heads, you decide to jump onto your head and you can no longer get back up because you're a coin. And if you land on tails, you discover that you didn't have a tail, so your journey continues. You decide to find the king of this land, known as King Flat. You go to King Flat, and King Flat says, Yo, dog, what's up? And you go, I don't know how to do this. King Flat goes, No problem, homester. And you go, that, that, What is homester? Well, it's like, you know, for those that are homeless, but they're also gangster. And you go, That's dumb, King Flat. And King Flat goes, Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, this is it. You're here now. You can become a coin man uh, with with the other coin people. And you go, King Flat, I, I don't want to be a coin man. And King Flat says, well, eh, that sucks. Sorry, dude. At this point, for those of you that are rolling the D6, go ahead and give that a roll. If you roll anywhere between one to six, the adventure ends and we go into an interview. <laughs> Hey there, welcome to the Matt Hawker Show. Now, I have one question for you, and this is the only question I'm going to ask you for the entire interview, and this is very important. Do you think I'm pretty? Go ahead. Um, well, you know... So anyway, welcome to the Matt Hawker Show. Um, how are you doing today? And tell me what, what you're all about. Let's let's dive into that a little bit. Let's let's take that boogie board and let's go into that wave. Sure, man. Uh, so I'm Jules the Human. Uh, I'm Julian, you know, known as Jules the Human, whatever, on the internet. And I make some podcasts. I do some videos on YouTube. I'm a classically trained trombonist. I do a bunch of different stuff. But mainly, mm -hmm. uh, interview musicians on the Texas Music Spotlight, talk nerdy on the Nerdy Things podcast, and uh, just do a bunch of stuff. No, 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 no. That, that's that is that is very exciting. Uh, you know, you're, you seem like a pretty busy dude. Um, what do you do when you're not being busy? Um, I think sleeping sometimes, most of the time. And you never answered if I'm pretty. Am I? Am I pretty? Um, well, you know, that's that's kind of uh, subjective. I don't know uh, mm. if, if I can get into that kind of stuff, but. Uh, mm, I, uh, I mean, that's a really, that's an important part of the show, Jules. I, I got to be real with you. You're like, I, 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 I dig it. I mean, you have some nice teeth. Um, I, you know, I do have nice teeth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of the thing about my teeth is that I, I do enjoy masticating from time to time. You know, I just like finding a pine cone and chewing on it for a couple hours. Is that, have you ever eaten a pine cone before? No, is that how you got your teeth that way? I, I should try that it's, then. Well, no, it's not how they got that way, but I mean that is part of the part of the the, the tooth process. Okay. I mean, you don't start with eating pine cones; you got to work your way up. There. Oh, like I started shit. by okay. eating like rubber bands, then erasers, then entire pencils, hmm. then um, uh, machines of all sorts. I ate like a car engine a while ago, and then I moved on to pine cones, which are like the hardest substance in the universe. So you, you got to work your way up to pine cones. You can't just jump into okay, pine I'm cones. Okay, I'm sorry. Everybody knows. That. Yeah, I guess I haven't really di dove into that lately. I've just been sleeping, I guess, while this whole fad yeah, kind of came out out came out of nowhere no that that's okay now, Jules, so let me ask you because speaking of sleep and dreams what do you think is the best state of mind and why isn't it a part of the united states of america yet go ahead whenever you're ready. oh yeah sure um <laughs> i'm not too sure how to answer that one that one's a a tough one this is a, man this is like a this is like sort of a, a ninth grade social studies thing no worries take your time it's we all got to go back to that state i get it <laughs> the, the whenever the whenever state of mind that that is best should be part of the united yeah for that should be part of the united states you know 50 states um, i'm probably gonna say also, texas also, because we, texas is where i'm from so just uh the state of texas is, is a great so place the state of mind to be in <laughs> okay so the texas is your state yeah of mind, always is what you're saying you know howdy and all right, cowboys so, and all that <laughs> howdy cowboys yeah. 
I, I mean, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, Texas does have a lot of howdy cowboys. That's a that's a fair point, Jules. I didn't think of it that way. Thank you for enlightening me to Texas. But I, I mean, following up on that, um, I guess I guess my question is, how often are you in a Texas state of mind? Is that like an everyday thing for oh, you, yeah. or is it just every now? And then? No, it's it's in my blood, man. You just gotta be. You gotta always be in that state of mind. Whenever someone's gonna uh, quick draw you on the street, you just gotta you know be ready, be ready for that kind of stuff. So, so this isn't just a state of mind. This is a blood type. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, if you if someone was in an injury and, you know, they were like dying and they needed like Texas blood, you'd be able to give yeah, it to them. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, like I, so, I always like to give back, so I I do give my Texas blood every once in once in a while because it is pretty rare, mm-hmm. but you know. Is your Texas blood bigger than regular blood? Oh, of course, yeah. Always. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. No, no, that 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 that's reasonable. So Jules, uh, let me let me ask you a question here. Have you ever um have you ever consumed like a live shark? Like just just eating it, just pulled it out of the ocean, and just started chomping away. Uh, I can't say that I have. No, I did try octopus one time, and that was interesting. Right. But sharks, no. I heard they're really uh, interesting in tornadoes, though. That's pretty cool. Well, see, Jules, I, I, I it's interesting you say because I hired a private investigator six months ago to follow you really? around. And okay. They say that you've been eating. They, you say you've been eating sharks for like the last six months. Oh, like you've been going out into the ocean and just eating sharks do you want to do you want to correct the record here um yeah i guess i'll say this on the record right now i mean Mm -hmm. i didn't think this would be the time to do that but yeah i guess since uh you've had that going on which i mean i don't know if that's that's very uh good good to admit that but i mean you Mm -hmm. did it so it's it's fine no it's cool it's cool it's i mean it's whatever but yes uh I'm part of the National Shark Protection Organization, and um, also known as NSPO. And I, I got to tell you, Jules, we've been monitoring you for quite a while. It's uh, this has actually all been a, really? a giant ruse. The Matt Hawker Show isn't real. Huh. Uh, you're actually on a shark protection podcast where we talk to those who eat sharks and try to help them, you know, find freedom from their shark addiction. Wow, I, I, you know, when I said you were pretty earlier and I liked your teeth, I'm gonna take that back mm-hmm. now. Um, I mean, that's okay. That's 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 very fair. You know, you can do that. That is okay. I, um, you're we are in a a safe place in the ocean right I, now. You um, know, I, I don't know. I don't think I don't feel very safe now. Now that you're kind of coming at me with my habits and things well, like that, that's not. I don't know if that's okay. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like this podcast. What's going on now? I'm I'm so confused. Jules, we're sending uh, 17 SWAT sharks to your house right now uh, to. Um, take care of you so jules best of luck to you thanks for being on the show today you know i hope you make it um you know it's been a pleasure and you know if you are able to fight off the sharks then well i you are you are a strong individual indeed and i'm I'm sure you will because you have texas blood uh thank you i guess thanks for for having me on this show for the Matt Hawker show wake up Matt come on Jesus oh my god dude we taught Matt get, get up get up and do the show Matt Matt come on let's go let's go let's go it's time for the Matt Hawker game show it is a it's time for the Matt Hawker game show Let, all right let's let's redo that uh that sound clip and you know just don't interrupt me like when I, oh, okay okay fine whatever okay all right whatever oh my god oh this show is a mess Jesus Christ who is producing this Oh yeah. All right. So, uh, welcome to the Matt Hawker Game Show. I'm Matt. You're the you're the listener. Yeah, that's cool, I guess. Um, today in the game show, we're going to be basically asking questions to myself. Uh, Matt, I hope you get this right. First question: What is your name? Oh my God. Um. Uh, uh, um. Uh, ooh. Uh, could I use a um uh, uh can I use a uh, lifeline? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so do you want to call a friend? Uh yeah, absolutely. Let me uh hold on a second. Let me let me get out this phone. Uh hold on a second. Um all right, I'm on my phone now. Who should I call? Um oh god, I can't uh oh i got my buddy here i got a buddy let me call buddy hold on a second let's let's see what happens here let's just let's just oh oh there we go oh yeah 
Oh, yeah. Here we are. Here we go. Hello? What is my name? What is my name? Hello? What is my name? Hold on. I need a... My name! That was nice. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's been a while since I've I've done what need what needs to be done. I, I have to clean my mess, so to speak. Uh, yesterday, I pooped for about six hours down the hall of uh, of um, this large university down the street, and I also pooped down the street on the way here. And I got to be real with you guys, there was a lot of poop everywhere. Um, I didn't look back, quite frankly, and. I, I just try to look forward when those sorts of things happen, but you know, what, what can you do really? You know, what, what can you do? I mean, really, <laughs> what can you do really? <laughs> and, and so there's all this poop that's just, it's just everywhere. And it's like, it's every kind of poop you can think of. It is diarrhea. It is runs. It is solid. It is number two. It is brown. It is big. It is crunchy. It is crumply. This poop has every feature of any poop you can think of. Some of it's even bloody, and some of it's like that green poop. I I don't know where that came from. It's like sort of a Christmas thing. And I mean, if you like take the green poop and the red poop, you basically have December for the most part. And just, you know, add in some lights onto that string of poop and, you know, you're good to go. But, you know, a lot of this just sort of feels inspired by an incident that I experienced when I was a child. And I'll never be able to forget this. When I was a kid, I walked into a bathroom and I opened up a toilet stall and, and I, I looked at the toilet. Now, normally when I walk into a toilet stall, I rip off my clothes and I just let loose before I even get, sit down. I That's just how I do it. You know, I'm not judging you for however you do it in the bathroom, but I, that's what I do. And um, I, I just looked down and I, st- I started crying when I saw this. There were three little heart-shaped poos in this toilet. And I had never seen anything like this in my life. We are we are talking something beyond the the norms of reality. This was honestly kind of scary, but it was a, a poetic fear. It was it was so frightening and otherworldly that it was beautiful. It I, I feel like it's like it was like looking at a Van Gogh painting for the first time, and it's something that you can never have taken from you. Like this is a permanent part of of who I am now, honestly. And so when I think about all the miles of poop that I left, I, I realized that there's one type of poop I, I didn't uh, give this earth, and that was a heart-shaped poo. And, I, you know, I, I feel that I haven't done what needs to be done. I feel like my legacy is tarnished in a way because I couldn't create that which made me. Um, you know, those heart-shaped poos, those three little heart-shaped poos have... They've done so much for me, and I, I honestly, I'm, I'm a little ashamed that I couldn't recreate that for you, the listener, tonight. And I'm sorry. Uh, I, I ate all sorts of things. You know, I, I ate anything you could think of that relates to a heart, including the human heart, and I just didn't get a heart-shaped poo out. And I'm again, I'm sorry. I, I hope one day you'll forgive me. Uh, if you don't, I, I understand. We can end this. Uh, you know, we can see other people. We can, you know, we can, we can move on from here. You know, you don't have to stay here if you're not comfortable with that. You don't have to to be with me if that's not what you want. I realize that my butt isn't like a Play-Doh set that produces shapes as it pushes out the clay of dough. I realize that my butthole just doesn't do that. And I'm sorry that I don't have a heart-shaped butthole. I know how much that means to you. I know how much you want that. And I just... I'm just... I'm just so sorry. I, I'm just so. I, uh, I don't know what's next for me. Where do I go? Who would take me in? Who, who would want me? I, I just. I feel like I'm not. Say my- Once again, here we are. We are getting closer to the end, and the end is not what you want it to be, and it's not what I want to see, but you know what? We're experiencing our senses all at once. I've gotten older over the last 14 minutes, and I've learned a lot about myself and you, the listener, and I I know that 
you know, I feel like every episode is a learning experience. Um, you know, really, when I record these shows, I, I'm reading a book, I'm not writing one, I'm reading it. I, I've opened up the book to the heart's desire, so to speak, or or maybe the mind's the mind's ear, or you know, the the the. The, the 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 livers the livers yearn the livers yearning I, I there, there's there's a lot of organs at play here and not all of them have keys <laughs> but you know I I I gotta say I I I feel as if um I I have experienced the library with you guys um and you know as as much as I've been told to keep quiet, I, I, I feel like, you know, we own this library now. Like we've buried that librarian deep under the earth where, you know, he or she won't bother us anymore. I couldn't tell what they were. I maybe they were an animal, I don't know, but they're gone now and they're part of the earth, just like us. Just in a different way. In a in a non uh you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, well, in a, in, a, in an organic kind of way. Uh, in a way that they can give back truly without uh, putting their finger over their lips or putting their hair back or wearing really thick-rimmed glasses or telling me I have a $9.50 return fee for not giving a book back or or just, you know, screeching and hissing like the librarians they are because, you know, librarians are snakes, basically. Evil, evil snakes, and I hate them. I hate librarians. I hate them. But... You know, I, I feel like I'm at a library when I do this show, and I'm absorbing so much knowledge thanks to all of you. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for you, my friend. Uh, without you, there wouldn't be a me. Anyway, uh, that's, that's, man, hmm. oh, this, is a, this is a great episode with you and me. I mean, I got to get into all the things now, the... The end bits. You know about the end bits. You know what I mean? Let me let me get into the end bits here. Uh, you can. Uh... <laughs> oh God! Let me just. <sighs> uh, you can follow me on. <laughs> Patreon. At patreon.com slash the Matt Hawker Show. I'm on Twitter at twitter.com slash Matt Hawker Show. Facebook.com slash the Matt Hawker Show. You can find my crap on Redbubble. I got some, I got some shirts if you want the shirt. <laughs> I'm on. Um, you can find me. I. <laughs> You can find me on this show. I'm here on the show. <laughs> I'm at the Mad Hacker Show. I'm just making quality content for you. I'm making quality content for you. I'm just gonna dig it. <laughs> I'm gonna dig it and just. <laughs> Pain. Makes the comedy. Pain makes the comedy. Pain makes the comedy. <gasps> On the Matt Hawker Show, uh, we believe that uh, pain makes the comedy. And it's through artistic pain that we can truly find integrity. Now, I know that pain is not something you want to experience, and I don't either. But to truly understand postmodern art in the audio form, we must convey our deepest sympathies to those that the flesh have suffered through and flesh being a, a pretty weird dude. I, I got to say, uh, maybe we shouldn't do that. And maybe if you see someone just ripping themselves apart with nails that aren't there because they ripped their nails off, you probably should run and keep running. Don't stop running. Like keep going, like go as fast as you can. Don't stop. Keep running, breathe in, breathe out one leg at a time. Keep your hands in rhythmic motion with your legs to extend your pace. You can do this. See the finish line. Imagine it. Get there. It's yours. This is your dream to cross. Don't wake up, but become aware. <laughs> <laughs>